Hello everyone, today is our first webinar uh, which is going to be devoted to treatment of pelvic congestion syndrome. This condition is uh, fairly common but quite often underdiagnosed. It results in a significant impact on uh, quality of life, particularly in the uh, young and middle-aged uh, female patients. Uh, ovarian vein incompetence can be seen in up to 10% of women and is quite often associated with the pelvic congestion syndrome. Uh, that percentage can reach even up to 60%. The hallmark of uh, symptoms associated with the pelvic congestion syndrome is dull ache, which can be bilateral or unilateral. That ache uh, is quite often exacerbated by long periods of standing and uh, sitting, as well as physical exercises. Generally, pelvic congestion syndrome is uh, listed under causes responsible for chronic pelvic pain, so fairly common condition seen uh, amongst uh, general practitioners. Many women do not uh, view this condition as treatable and therefore they sometimes are destined to endure rather than actively manage that problem. Um, currently endoluminal interventions are the main way of uh, managing that problem uh, and they involve either scleral therapy or predominantly these days transcatheter coil embolization. The condition uh, itself uh, is uh, involving predominantly uh, pelvic pain, sometimes combination of pelvic, abdominal and peroneal pain, not infrequently associated with some congestion affecting lower limbs. Approximately 40% of patients uh, will develop that non-cyclical pelvic pain uh, during the life cycle. Um, the typical age of onset of symptoms is between 20 and 30, but quite often those symptoms deteriorate with time and peak uh, in the third and fourth decade of life. Those symptoms may account up to 15% of visits uh, with gynecology complaints and again quite often are not quite recognized as part of pelvic congestion syndrome. The pain itself being dull, achy, uh, quite often unilateral, is exacerbated clearly by physical exercises, prolonged standing, uh, prolonged immobilization. Quite frequently there are urogynecological symptoms involved, in, uh, and these include dysfunctional uterine bleeding, dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, as well as dysuria without any urinary tract infections. Investigating uh, pelvic congestion syndrome is relatively simple, uh, however interpretation of investigations um, is probably best done by the um, well-trained uh, vascular and endovascular surgeon. The ultrasonography is the main way of approaching um, investigations. It's non-invasive, uh, it's easily accessible and obviously doesn't involve any radiation. Uh, ultrasonography represents usually um, sluggish venous flow with the tortuous pelvic veins exceeding six millimeters in diameter with um, pelvic congestion identified by reflux and uh, with dilated arcuate veins in the myometrium. More sophisticated way of investigating involve uh, CT venograms and MR venograms which again will demonstrate presence of um, large uh, volume of contrast within the pelvic area if prop, uh, appropriately organized um, they also will show an increased diameters of ovarian veins and pelvic veins uh, tortuous veins um, sensitivity of this uh, investigations is high however specificity, specificity is not as good finally the venography itself uh, which is frequently combined with treatment uh, identifies large tortuous di dilated ovarian veins, usually the left one, um, with diameters exceeding six to eight millimeters with uh, contrast uh, stagnation within the vein itself and the ovarian veins. The rationale for treatment is uh, intended uh, to abolish reflex flow and therefore diminish or exclude uh, venous hypertension within the pelvic area. Um, it also, by virtue of reducing the reflux and pressure, can influence uh, the symptoms described uh, within the lower limbs, so partic particularly uh, symptoms of fullness, swelling, uh, discomfort. 
the embolization therapy is a golden standard in treating those um, conditions, uh, particularly uh, left ovarian vein coil embolization. The technical success rate is high, in uh, high 90%, uh, approaching probably 100%. The improvement is seen usually within a couple of weeks in majority of uh, patients uh, and um, the relief of symptoms is seen in as many as uh, 70 to 80 percent of patients. The recovery from the procedure is fairly quick with a very minimal amount of complications. Procedures themselves can be um, performed on a day uh, only basis and require local anesthetic only. The recurrence rate, uh, rate for those conditions is quite low, um, less than uh, 10%. Couple of uh, slides to demonstrate uh, structures that we frequently identify during um, coil embolization. So this is the appearance of the inferior vena cava, which obviously leads us to the left renal vein and then subsequently selectively to the uh, left ovarian vein. This picture represents a uh, large incompetent uh, left ovarian vein with multiple viruses uh, in the pelvic area. Subsequent measurements are taken to uh, be able to identify what uh, size of calls uh, would be the most appropriate and then uh, based on the access with the microcatheter, those calls are de delivered and positioned within the distal aspects of um, ovarian veins, so around the viruses within the pelvis. And this um, picture represents uh, early um, parts of cold embolization. Subsequently, the um, length, the entire length of the ovarian vein is embolized uh, up to its confluence with the uh, left renal vein. To summarize, um, pelvic congestion syndrome and uh, associated uh, ovarian vein incompetence are commonly responsible and part of the pelvic congestion and chronic pelvic pain. They can be easily investigated with uh, appropriate duplex ultrasound. Treatment is based on minimally invasive day-only procedures uh, utilizing call embolization of the incompetent left ovarian vein. Results are encouraging with a uh, large volume of patients uh, uh, responding well and the uh, number of complications after this procedure is low. The recurrence is uh, also low, less than 10%. This condition is clearly underdiagnosed. Uh, once diagnosed, it, it should be treated or at least uh, attempted to be treated uh, with the minimally invasive techniques. Thank you for your attention and um, I invite you to our next webinar.